Can I just start with saying again, wow, what, what an awesome Veterans Day service again yesterday. And a big, big thank you again to Mr. Gosh and the Student Council and Mission Advancement and all the students and faculty and staff to, to put on a, a great service yesterday. It's always such a privilege. Thanks to Pastor Dobler for another great message that he shared and also thanks to our, our Wisco graduate, for those of you who missed it, we had a graduate, Major Craig Kufall from the U.S. Army who joined us, a graduate of uh, about 2003 from Wisco. And uh, I wish he wasn't so humble uh, because then he would have really told you all the amazing stories, the things that he has done, flying Black Hawk and Apache helicopters and all this kind of stuff. But as it is, a wonderful message about being a servant, humble leader. No doubt, that's why he has risen up the ranks so quickly. But I want to think for a second, could you imagine if Major Craig Hufall is enlisting in the army and, and his attitude was much different? What, what if he started his military career? He enters the army and he thinks, you know what, I cannot stand my supervising commanders. I cannot stand all those who are over me. You know what, I even hate that general of the U.S. Army. I don't want to do anything he says. I don't want to follow him. I think it's pretty obvious he wouldn't make it very far in the army. In fact, he'd probably be kicked out pretty fast. Or could you imagine if he entered and enlisted in the army and, and his attitude was like, okay, well, I'm all right with that general guy, but you know what? I have all the, these gifts of, of training and skills and expertise but I don't think I'm really going to use them. I'm just going to let them sit to the side. Someone else can do all the work, and I'm just going to collect my little checks, gather my pension, and, and just call it a day. Again, I don't think he would get very far. That's a pretty lazy, apathetic, uncaring attitude. If you can understand that, th then have that as the backdrop, as, as the frame of reference, the context for the attitudes you're going to hear today in a very challenging parable that Jesus tells. Jesus was at the house of Zacchaeus. Remember Zacchaeus, the wee little man, the, the tax collector who had repented? And, and Jesus said he came to seek and save the lost. And, and people were fired up. All right, here we go. Now comes the kingdom of God. We're marching on towards Jerusalem. Jesus was making his way about 15 miles for the last time. And people had this feeling like, here it comes. The king, the kingdom, here we go. And so we jump in in Luke chapter 19. And here's what Jesus has to say. While they were listening to this, again, they're at Zacchaeus' house, he went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. Now, as you hear this story, I want you to think about what are the attitudes of the people toward the king? Verse 12, Jesus said, A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. Think of Jesus who came to this world to claim his victory and then returned to his heavenly father later. So he called ten of his servants and he gave them ten minas, each one. A mina was like three months' wages, so maybe today like ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. So let's just take a time out quick and think about, process what we have going on here. The king comes to his people and what do we find? His subjects, all his people, hated him. They wanted nothing to do with him. We might think of John chapter 1 where it talks about Jesus, the word made flesh, who came to his own people and they did not recognize him, they did not want him. He as the light came into the darkness. And here there's this rejection, but verse 15 he was made king. There was no stopping him from being king, from, from him claiming his victory, from being king of kings and lord of lords. Jesus came, he lived, he died, he rose, and he returned home. We know this as his ascension into heaven. And so seamlessly from there to the next paragraph, Jesus jumps from going back home, ascending into heaven, to this judgment day scene. The king is going to hold court and he calls his servants before him. Okay, 
What have you done while I've been gone, servants? Let's see what happens. The first servant came and said, Sir, your mina has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten cities. You took this ten to fifteen thousand dollars, now it's a hundred to a hundred and fifty thousand. Great work, here's more gifts. The second servant came and said, Sir, your mina has earned five more. His master answered, You take charge of five cities. We see the attitude here of these servants who, who weren't really expecting anything in the first place. They didn't ask for a mina. They didn't necessarily earn it. The king just came and gave it to them. And they went to work and they weren't expecting anything more. They weren't expecting any more gifts. And the king just graciously gave them more gifts. Well done. Compare that now with the third group represented by this one servant. Think about his attitude. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and you reap what you did not sow. You are so demanding. You're such a harsh and mean king and you always want to take, take, take and you never give, give, give. His master, the king, replied, note a little sarcasm in the words, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. Oh, you knew, did you, that I am a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow. Well, why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back I could have collected it with interest? The least you could have done was stuff it in a bank account to collect interest. Notice how this is a description of the king that isn't true. He isn't really mean or harsh or demanding. It's his own words. That's what you think of me? Well, I'm going to judge you by your own words, you wicked, lazy servant. And then he said to those standing by, take his mina away from him. Give it to the one who has ten minas. Sir, they said he already has ten. He repi replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away but those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. And that's it. Court closed. The king, the judge, has finished his session. There's rewards, there's blessings, there's gifts, and there's punishments, there's consequence, there's death. Okay. We understand what happened in the parable. Now the big question. What in the world does this mean to me? And especially, what does Jesus mean by this phrase? To everyone who has, more will be given. I want you to think for a moment, well, what did you have in the first place? And by first place, I mean all the way at the beginning, your first moments. What did you come into this world with? Absolutely nothing. In fact, if we want to be, I suppose, most theologically accurate, what did you come into this world with? Sinfulness. Surely I was sinful from birth from the time my mother conceived me. You came into this world with a negative bank account, a separation from God, a division because of sinfulness. In that way, I suppose, we're like those subjects who hated their king naturally by our sin. And yet, what do we have? Though we have nothing, though we deserve nothing, we have a king who has come. A king who has come to do what no one would expect a king, what no king should or would do. A king who would come and lay down his life for the people. A judge who would do the completely unexpected, take the judgment on himself. The verdict of sinner, the verdict of guilty, the, the verdict of death. And so by his grace, he just gives. This king just gives us this precious mina of the gospel. We have absolutely nothing. We deserve nothing. And he just gives this mina to us and says, here, here's my forgiveness. Here's my grace. Here's my love. It's all for you. Just like the servants in, in the parable. We didn't know it was coming. We didn't expect it. And he just gives. And he says, here, take this mina. Take this gospel and, and go. Go work in my kingdom. And he ascends into heaven. And so now I, I suppose we're not in that first group. So I suppose the question is, which of the other servants are you? The first two? Or are you like the last servant? 
I suppose it depends on your attitude. Did you notice in that last servant his attitude? He had been given graciously this mina, this gift. Here, it's all yours. And what was his attitude? He was resentful. He was fearful. He was lazy. He was apathetic and uncaring. I wonder if Satan ever tempts our attitudes to be like that with this precious mina, this treasure that God has given. We have a lot of visitors here today, grade schoolers, I think a lot are 7th graders. That, that means most of you, all of you, are probably in, in catechism class. I wonder if you've ever had the attitude, Ugh, another hymn for hymnology class to memorize? Four stanzas this time? more Bible verses to memorize and the Apostles' Creed and the meaning to the Seventh Commandment. I mean, come on, we should fear love and God above all things. Could it ever be that you have this kind of attitude? I know you must because our high school students do too. Another service. We just had a long Reformation service, now a long Veterans Day service, and oh, two weeks, a long Thanksgiving service, more chapel time, religion class every day. I mean, come on, I know that stuff. I've learned that stuff before. And all of a sudden, we start taking on this attitude with this precious treasure, this, this mina, this gospel that's been given to us of, of laziness and apathy and uncaring and not wanting to use it or to treasure it. And, and we go home in our busy days after we have practices and events and all kinds of stuff on our calendars all over town and we just let that mina sit on the shelf without even opening up and, and reading one bit of God's Word. And we come into chapel and we slide into our seats and the, the treasure is being given by the king every single day and oh, again, here it comes. Just like this servant and, and Jesus the king says, you, you wicked and lazy servant. Here's the amazing thing. That despite all our, our apathy, despite all our uncaring attitudes and our laziness with this treasure of the gospel, the king still comes to us with his forgiveness and grace upon grace upon grace to the one who has, to us, to, who have the gospel, he's going to give even more that one day we'll stand before him in his court. The court will be in session. And, and this is not going to be like standing before Mr. Rogers with his nice little sweater on because Jesus is more than that. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. God Almighty who will be seated on his throne and we stand before him and says, okay, what have you done with my mina? I've given you something. What have you done with that gospel? We'll say, I don't know, Jesus. I haven't really done as much as I could have. I haven't treasured as much as I should have. And grace upon grace, to the one who has, more will be given. He'll look at you and me and say, well done, good and faithful servant. And you and I will ask him, well, what have I done for you, Jesus? He'll say, whatever you've done for one of the least of these, so you've done for me. Remember when you smiled and served breakfast to those veterans and gave them respect and love? Remember when you volunteered your time to give tours to 7th graders from your grade school? Remember when you paid your own money, okay, your parents' money, to go on mission trips around the country and around the world to, to go and share the good news of Jesus with people you've never met before, sometimes in precarious situations? Remember when you helped teach Sunday school at church and helped out at vacation Bible school? Well done, good and faithful servant. That treasure, that gift, that mina, that gospel has been put to use and now I will give you not five cities not ten cities no I'll give you the city the city of God Jerusalem the golden it's yours to the one who has even more will be given friends see in this parable today who your king really is not a harsh not a demanding not a mean king no Jesus king of kings lord of lords is your king who is loving and forgiving and giving grace upon grace upon grace. Friends, that is your king and my king and our king. Treasure your mina, the gospel, and put it to work for the king. Amen.